Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. At last, this is my no-nonsense guide for you to do the Blood of the Dead Easter Egg. The very first thing you need to do in your game is to activate the Pack-a-Punch, or at least that is the first Easter Egg step. However, there are other things that you can do in your game as you go towards the Pack-a-Punch, such as filling all three dog heads on the map to get the Retriever. You'll need the Retriever because it will give you a spoon, and that spoon is going to be used for kind of step two after Pack-a-Punch is opened, although it might as well really be step one. If you need guides for opening Pack-a-Punch, getting the spoon, upgrading the spoon to the Spork, getting the Retriever, getting the Redeemer, anything like that, all of them are linked in the description down below and also in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. There's a little card you can click and it will show you all of my guides for those. However, assuming you know how to do them because I've got the guides on my channel, the first step is going to be to open up the pap. As soon as that's done, you'll be on to shock and denial. Now for this, you need to get the spoon. It doesn't have to be the golden spork. It can just be the regular spoon and knife the wall just up the stairs in the warden's house right here. It will scratch the wallpaper and you then need to bring a slamming Brutus. That's a specific kind of Brutus that does the jump slam attacks up the stairs here. And when he gets to the top, a trigger will activate and he will jump in the air, slam down and disappear and die. And any zombies that are there as well will also, I think, just like get zapped out and die too. To consistently spawn in one of these particular types of Brutus, get to round 17, go to the three dials at the bottom of the citadel and enter the numbers 666 after you've shocked it with a shield blast. The jumping zapping Brutus will then spawn every time. It doesn't matter if it's a dog round. It doesn't matter if it's a regular round. As long as you're on round 17, this should work. You'll also get multiple other spawns of jumpy shocky zappy Brutus at and above this round just from your regular gameplay in the map. The wall will open and you'll be able to enter the warden's secret room. Now in here, you need to do two things. One, there's a red orb just on the desk that you need to pick up. And two, you need to activate the power switch next to the warden to pull the veil off him and complete this part of the Easter egg. You're then on to the next step in the process. Now that you've got the red orb, you need to go all the way back to spawn and on the map, place the orb inside the map itself. Just hold square on it to do so. Then go over to the Cronorium and hold square. You'll notice that there's a bird that ends up coming out and it's going to fly away with the Cronorium. And your job over the next few rounds is gonna to be to get that book back. To do this, you need the shield. Now, now, I have a guide for the shield on my channel, just like everything else. I also have an upgraded shield guide, which I highly recommend because the upgraded shield is going to take more damage and makes this step much easier. So you should probably get on that and do that too. Link in the description down below. Once you have your shield, you're going to be able to start running around the map while you're holding the shield and you're going to need to listen in all the areas of the map for a bird squawking. It sounds like a seagull going bah, 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 like that sort of thing. Wow, that was a terrible bird impression. That's some nonsense for sure. But you need to listen out for this bird and you can also go into spectral vision and look for the bird itself. It will be a blue ethereal bird just like you saw flying away with the Cronorium itself. When you hear the bird, that's going to be a sign that you're near it and you can follow your ear towards it and then use your spectral vision to try and find exactly where it is. When you find the bird perched somewhere on this next round, you need to shoot it with a spectral blast, which can be done by getting three three souls out of zombies or dogs with your warden's key, which is part of your shield. You then L2 and R2 or left trigger, right trigger to do a spirit blast and you need to blast the bird. You have to do this whole process of finding the bird by hearing it and seeing it with a shield and then spectral blasting it three rounds in a row, but it could end up going back on itself. So check all of the spawns in the map every single time. I'm going to have a list on the screen right now of some of the possible spawn locations, but there are so many. Realistically, I can't show you them all in this video. You're going to have to just listen out for it. Go to spawn, go through every single room, holding your shield, listen for the bird, and you should be able to find it. After you've done three spirit blasts on three different birds on three different rounds, you're then going to need to do a similar thing a fourth time, but it's going to be a slightly different version of the task we just completed. This time, you're not going to be able to see the bird itself in your spectral vision. Instead, you're going to have to be in zombie blood with your shield in order to see the bird. So once again, use your ears to try and find where the bird is. You'll then be able to know if you're looking in the right place or not for the bird, because when you're in your spectral vision, just running around and popping that spectral vision up across your face, you should start hearing the warden crying. And that's a sign that you're looking directly where the bird is. You just can't see it because you're not in zombie blood just yet. To get into zombie blood, you need to spectral blast the three dials at the bottom of the citadel. That will electrocute 
execute it, and you'll be able to enter a number. You need to enter the numbers 872 going left to right. That will then spawn in a zombie blood. You can grab the zombie blood, run over to the fourth bird location you've just found, go into your spectral vision, and you'll see exactly where the bird is only once your zombie blood is active. You then, instead of shield blasting it, please don't make that mistake because you'll have to do this again next round, you need to go over to the bird and tomahawk it. You're going to retrieve the Cronorium from the bird by tomahawking it. And that's going to be step complete once you look down at the floor and hold square on the Cronorium that you have just got from the bird. Note that sometimes the bird will fly away before you can tomahawk it. Our best strategies that we've found to counteract this and prevent it from happening is to make sure that no one else is in the room with you and the bird when you're going into zombie blood, because them being in shield vision can sometimes mess this up. You also ideally want to just very quickly blink into your shield vision to see the bird and then go out of your shield vision and throw the tomahawk straight away. Don't delay, just chuck it, and hopefully, fingers crossed, if things work out for you, you'll get the Cronorium at your feet. Now, sometimes the bird won't even render in because the game just can't can't stream it into the view of your actual character fast enough, and if that happens, it is still there, and you should in theory be able to tomahawk it, but because this step is a little glitchy for that sort of thing, it's kind of 50-50 as to whether it will work in your game. However, if it does mess up, or if the bird flies away, you should be able to give this another go next round in a new spawn location. Once you've got the Cronorium, you need to go back to the Warden's secret room and give him the Cronorium. You're then going to want to hold square on the book to turn it to a particular page. Then, use your spectral vision to see the numbers on the page. Those numbers need to be entered into the electrical dials that we just used in the Citadel moments ago. So go down there and enter the numbers that were written on the Cronorium's pages. When entered correctly, your character will say something like, Ah, very good. You'll then need to start looking around the map for where the lighthouse is pointing its red beam to. There are five possible locations for where the red beam could end up. Once you find where it's pointing, you need to go over to it and go into shield vision. You should see that while you're in that vision, there's a portal, and you need to zap that portal with a spectral blast to bring it into the real world. It will then be visible even if you're not in shield vision. This portal is going to be a challenge, and I'm going to run through all of the challenges now. They're not always in the same order, so don't worry if I'm not talking about your challenge first, but I suggest you watch the next, like, five, ten minutes of the video. I'll explain all of the challenges, and then you'll have a good idea of how to do whatever one comes up first in your game. Note before you jump in that all the challenges here are going to give you a red orb at the end, and all of them need to be placed in the map in the spawn area. Also, each time you complete a challenge and you've put that red orb in the map, you're going to need to go back over to the Cronorium, which will be doing its little flappy boy animation, hold square on it, get three new numbers, put those numbers into the shock boxes in the bottom of the citadel, and then that will cause the lighthouse to move its beam to wherever your next challenge is going to be. The first one I'm going to talk about here is the Simon Says Step. This one is going to be started in the first power room. You're going to activate the shield, and then you need to go to the second power room. I suggest if you're doing this co-op that you have one person hold all the zombies, and the other player can do the Simon Says then without too many zombies spawning on them. Whoever's doing Simon Says is going to go over to the silver machine in the corner of the room. They're going to activate that, and one of the six machines around the room is going to have a white light appear on it. You'll start off with just one light. You need to remember which light lit up, and then after a few seconds it will go off, and it'll be your turn to enter in the combination that you were just showed. In this case, it's just one light, so go over to whatever lit up and hold square. That will be the end of the sequence, so the game will then return to you with two new lights for you to copy. Note that the combination is going to change each time, so you'll get one light, you repeat the one light. Then you get a new two lights, and you do the new two light. And then you enter three, then it will show four, you enter four, it will show five, you enter five, and then you'll have completed the step. Now when you get to the end of this, you need to keep your eye out for three lights that are going to all be on at the same time at the end of the Simon Says process. Note down the symbols which are written on little bits of paper in front of those three machines. You also need to pick up a punch card which will spawn on this shelf just here. You need to take the punch card to the spawn area of the map and enter it into this rectangular Gorad Krovi looking computer. Its screen should go white and six screens in that same room that you're standing in right now should go green. The purpose of those screens is to essentially translate the symbols that you just had at the end of your Simon Says game back in the second power room into what's called hobo code. When you hold square on any of the 
computers in the room, and feel free to do this in your game now, you should see that your symbol will correspond to a certain symbol in hobo code. You can then flick it back and forth as much as you want to see which symbols correspond to which symbols in hobo code. Hopefully at this point you've written down or memorized the three symbols that we got in the second power room, the three that were lit up at the end of the sequence. Then just go over to the screens that they appear on in this room, Translate them into hobo by holding square, and then write down the three new symbols that you've just been given. You'll then need to go into the first power area, and you'll see, if you use spectral vision, that there's a ghost in there, an electrical engineering little ghost man, trying to turn all of the levers. So, at this point, we had three symbols at the end of the Simon Says. We've translated them into hobo using three of the green computers, and now you're going to match those three hobo codes to three of the machines that the ghost is trying to activate. You'll do this by noting that they actually have little bits of paper on the front of them with symbols on them, and so you just need to find the three that match your three hobo symbols. When you've found a match, you need to shield blast the ghost while he's trying to turn the lever of the relevant machines. So if you notice that the leftmost machine has one of the symbols that you have, simply wait until the ghost is trying to turn that lever and then blast him. He'll then successfully turn the lever and he'll start going back and forth with the other machines. Just do this once for each of your three symbols and the step will be complete. A red orb will drop at the ghost's feet once you're done and you'll need to pick that up. If you fail this step, by the way, you're going to need to do the whole Simon Says again because you'll need to get the three symbols at the end of it and those dictate which machines you're going to blast, so try not to mess this one up right at the end. The next challenge we're going to do is the Banjo Challenge. This one is in the showers, so shock it into position using your shield blast just like you do any of the other challenges. You'll then see a ghosty boy spawning in holding a banjo and you're going to want to hold square on the banjo to take it from him after he's played a little jingle. You'll then be locked in the room, so you'll want to make sure you have decent guns for this, and there'll be a blue fiery circle on the floor. Head over to that circle and stand in it and kill zombies. Souls from the zombies should go into the circle, and as long as you stay inside the circle and you definitely don't go outside it and kill enough zombies, the circle should disappear or move. If it moves, you just gotta run to the next circle and rinse and repeat, do the same thing. If it goes away and is just gone though, that's your indicator that you need to give the ghost his banjo back, he'll play another jingle, and then after about 10-15 seconds, another one of those red blobs will spawn on the floor, and you'll have completed the challenge. This one's really straightforward, as long as you're careful not to leave the blue circle on the floor, and I should also note that at the end of it, once you've given the ghost the banjo back, it can sometimes take an extra 30 seconds or so for the locked doors around the room to go away, so you may be trapped in there a little bit longer, don't be alive by that. Next up, the docks challenge. Once you've got those numbers from the Cronorium, you've zapped them into the machine, you've got the lighthouse to move, and it's ended up at the docks, you'll want to shock the portal into place like all the other challenges, and then you want to head over to the warden's office. In here, you should see a Morse code tapper. You're going to want to have a teammate protecting you because this is a nightmare on solo, and you need to use trial and error to find a Morse code combination which is going to spawn a boat. Now, for those of you that don't know, Morse code works with long and short dashes arranged in some kind of sequence, and so you're going to basically enter that by holding square. What I suggest you do in your game is hold down square for about half a second, and that's going to be a dot. If the warden laughs, that means your first character is not a dot, it's a dash. So you just need to wait for him to stop laughing and then hold square for about three seconds instead, and you should have him not laugh afterwards, and that's a sign that your first character is correct. So it starts off with a dash. Then just keep doing this until you get about 10 characters in, so that's 10 dots and dashes in a row. And when you get to the end of it all, your character, if you've done it successfully, will say, ah, yes, that's good. Or the warden will laugh and you'll need to correct whatever part of the sentence you made an error at. Now, this seems to quite commonly end up giving you a code that's something like dot dash 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 dot, like literally like eight dashes in the middle. Or you can get something that's something along the lines of dot dot dash 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 dot dot dash dash dash, something along those lines. They're quite often grouped, so if it starts with a dot and then straight away changes to a dash, try sticking with dash for a little bit before you decide to switch back to dot, and fingers crossed you can figure out the trial and error here in order to get that success quote at the end.
Ah, wunderbar. You then need to go up to the infirmary. In here, there's a room with a ribcage on a table. You need to kill a zombie in here, and then if you go into the shield vision, you should see that there is a spirit ghost boy just zooming around in the infirmary. You need to spirit blast him now, and he'll become visible even if you're not in shield vision. You need to go over to him and hold square. Then, you need to get zombie kills near him, and those kills are going to fuel him, and he will start following you. You're going to want to walk him all the way along to the gondola, and then take him with you in the gondola down to the docks and bring him to the portal that we spawned in at the start of this challenge. If he stops moving at any time, you can fill him up with some more souls just from regular zombies, and you're also able, if you really need to, to give him a little nudge by just kind of booping into him and shoving him with your body. I wouldn't recommend doing that too much because it's really awkward, but you should be just fine with this as long as you fill him with souls. Zombies aren't going to attack him, so you're all good there. You just need to make sure that souls are going into him, and he'll then follow you as long as you've held square on him. Once you get to the portal, he'll disappear. The red ball that you need will drop in place. You can go put that in the map, and this challenge will be complete. Next challenge, New Industries Portal. If the lighthouse is shining there, zap it into existence, and then run all the way away from New Industries, yeah, you're hearing that correctly, to the library area of the map. This is basically the original Mob of the Dead spawn kind of area. Get a zombie kill in the library, and then go into Spirit Vision, and you should see a ghost in there. You need to zap him into existence, and he will then start wandering across and into the Michigan Avenue side of the prison. He'll pick up a spoon there, and then he'll walk all the way across the map into the spawn where he will proceed to use that spoon to basically murder another person. In other words, this is not a nice ghost, so we're going to stop him. Before you zap this ghost initially to bring him into existence, I suggest you make sure you've done the shield upgrade, and if you've done that, you're going to be able to hold four spirit blasts in your key. If you've got teammates in your game, get them to do the shield upgrade as well, and make sure you've stocked up on as many spirit blasts as you can before you kick this off. The best strategy for this by far is to try and body block the ghost while he's walking around in the prison, so before he starts his route back to the spawn, spirit blast him so he's visible without spirit vision, and then start using your key on him to try and suck up his soul. After, and I kid you not, about six or seven spirit blasts and full key drains on him, you should see that he'll start to go red, and eventually, after enough spirit blasts and enough key drains, the ghost should become so red that it's visible permanently, even without any further spirit blasts and any further shield vision. Once this has happened, you need to kill him by using the trap in the new industries room. When you do so, he'll drop the red orb right where he died, and you'll have completed this step. Okay, I had to switch microphones here, so I'm sorry if this sounds a little bit different. The next challenge I'm going to show you is the one that spawns in just outside the warden's office. Now, the beam for this one doesn't really show up that well in the corridor, and so if you can't see it anywhere else on the map, there's a chance that it's just here and you need to go into spirit vision in order to see it. Then just chuck it as normal and it will spawn in. Once the portal's in, you're going to need to kill a zombie in the cafeteria and there should then be a ghost floating around in there ready to be spirit blasted. Now, this is, in my opinion, the coolest challenge out of all of them that are available in the game. What's going to happen is, as soon as you spirit blast that ghost to kind of activate him and bring him into the real world, you will then need to defend him as he makes his way through the prison. And there will be blue spirits in the cells and all over the prison, egging you on and cheering for you as you do it. It's absolutely awesome. There'll be a bunch of zombies spawning, they'll all be trying to attack you and the ghost, so keep him safe, and as the ghost takes damage, he'll start to go more and more red. So if you see a red effect on your ghost, you need to panic and start popping your specialist weapons and really try and do the best job you can of defending him as he walks through the prison. Eventually, he'll get to the portal that we blasted in at the beginning of the challenge. Once you do so, the orb will drop on the floor and you will be done. This one doesn't tend to be too hard if you're using magma gats, specialist weapons, those sorts of things. Just don't forget that you've actually got access to all of those things while you're doing it and then regret it afterwards if you fail. So that's all five of the challenges. When you're done with all the challenges, you should have collected in total five of those red gems, one from each challenge. You can chuck those in the map at spawn whenever you like. The next thing for us to do is go over to the warden's house. Go and hold square on the warden. 
You'll then get a cutscene. If you want to watch the full thing, it's linked in the top right hand corner of the screen or in the description down below. Once you're released from your cell, and I know, I can hardly believe I'm saying that, this is a wild easter egg man, you're going to want to pick up your loadout from the pack on the floor before you progress. Then, as you slowly but surely make your way through the prison, you should see the warden up ahead of you. Stuff will start spawning in when you get near to the prison door, and at that point, it's time to run. You need to run all the way along the catwalk, up onto the metal walkway, and then down and into the sort of spawn area of the map. Once you get over there, you should see this happen. Once that's done, on the floor you'll see another red gem. Pick that up, and then run into the spawn and place it in the map. You'll then have this happen. From here, you're going to want to run through the door just to your right hand side if you're facing the map, and then there'll be a pad you can stand on, and if your team all goes onto it together and holds square, you'll enter the boss fight. Prepare yourself both strategically and emotionally, because this one's going to be pretty heavy. In the boss fight, you need to kill all the zombies that are around you, kill the multiple Brutus spawns that you're going to get, and then, while you're killing everything, try to get a spirit blast built up on your shield. You're going to get to a point where there is a zone circled which you need to run into as soon as possible and shoot the red orbs in the sky. It's really important that you get into that zone and you shoot them as fast as you can because otherwise your team will wipe. It will kill you. Once you break all of the orbs in the sky, you should then be able to turn to the dark mechanism in the center of the room. This thing's going to be available for you to spirit blast. Spirit blast the dark mechanism at the top and the white sphere should go blue. You'll also want to keep an eye out for max ammos and carpenters as they spawn in. You have a good sort of five second window to grab them as soon as they get into the map, so that's when I recommend you pick those up. Once the dark mechanism is blue from the spirit blast, you'll then have a load more zombies and a load more brutuses and dogs and all those sorts of things spawning in. You've got to do the same thing again. Kill everything that you can, try and make sure that your shield doesn't break and build up another spirit blast. Then when the time comes, get inside the safe zone and shoot those red orbs and then turn to the dark mechanism and shield blast it to turn the white sphere to blue again. Then you're going to want to do that all one final time. Now there will come a point where the machine in the middle of the room gives you a prompt to enter the dark mechanism. This is where things, as if they weren't wild enough, go absolutely insane. If you're in a four player game, Richtfen needs to be the one to do this. Go and hold square on the dark mechanism. You will step inside and that player's vision will switch to a different view entirely. The rest of the players in the game will stay in the arena. If you are Richtofen, this is what it's going to look like. You will spawn in as post-revelations Richtofen into Alcatraz prison. You'll then go over to the pad which you used to teleport into the boss fight before and you will announce your presence in one of the coolest ways possible and you'll then basically have completed the easter egg. Congratulations, you've successfully got the Blood of the Dead Most Escape Alive trophy and triggered the cutscene. Now, I'm not going to play the full cutscene here because it's pretty damn emotional and I want you guys to experience this in game for yourselves. However, if you just want to watch the cutscene, I have a full video of it on my channel linked in the description down below and on screen right now in case you feel like clicking over. This has been a bit of a journey, this one. We had a lot of blue screens when we were solving this easter egg and a lot of game crashes and lag outs and everything. And I just want to say thank you for watching the video. If this no-nonsense guide has been useful, please leave a like, subscribe, click the bell to turn on notifications, all those sorts of things. And hopefully, I'll see you very soon in another Easter egg guide on my channel in the very near future. Thanks again. I have been Mr. Ruffle Waffles. Bye for now.